Karen Yazik was incredible as Carla Faye Tucker. She was born to play that part. She was everything that I imagined the lead actress to play Carla Faye Tucker. She was energetic, vibrant, youthful, and allowed the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to shine through her eyes. Karen Yazik dedicated a whole year of her life to watching tapes on the real Carla Faye Tucker, learning her mannerisms, her speech patterns, and there was a, a song that Carla Faye Tucker had taught herself sign language to, which was Ray Bolt's Thank You. And so Karen Yazik would watch that uh, tape over and over again, and for about three months before we started shooting, she memorized and would, would rehearse the Thank You song over and over again. And I have to say, on the set, that was her most brilliant moment, uh, was when she signed the song Thank You, because it was just like watching Carla Carla Faye Tucker. No! Don't you do this! Don't you quit on me, Carla! <laughs> Kenny Yazik is incredible. Kenny Yazik played Dana Brown, and that was a challenge for me to try to get an actor where um, he would represent all the traits that I saw in Dana Brown. But Kenny Yazik has them. He's a protector, he's a provider, he loves the Lord, he's a man after God's own heart, he is emotional. He's not afraid to say he loves Jesus and that he loved Carla Faye Tucker, which was a woman, a pickaxe killer, former prostitute on Texas death row. And so Kenny Yazik uh, picked up that mantle with such ease and did an incredible job. And the things about Kenny Yazik that you see in the film, especially him being a protector, I believe is, is what Dana Brown is all about. Then finally Helen called us and said, okay, it's a go, we're gonna shoot this film. And now it was becoming a reali reality and it was kind of yeah. scary because we were gonna have to memorize a whole lot of dialogue, a whole lot of pages, emotional stuff, very heavy, dramatic stuff. Well, and, and I think it's important to know that neither one of us had ever carried a lead role in a feature film. Right and it was very apparent that this was beyond us. This was beyond our capabilities. This was beyond um, our skills. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a good place for us to be right. because you know, it would have been real easy for us to get prideful and puffed up about it and think, wow, you know, this is all about us and we're real good and we can handle this. But it was very evident uh, from the beginning. And for really, I think for, I can speak, I think for a lot of people involved in the production, this was beyond us. Yes. So we constantly, we're desperately, and I think that's a good word to use, we were desperately dependent on God. Yes. And we woke up every morning desperate for God. Doing 40 pages of dialogue uh, a day on soap operas um, really did prepare us. And, and again, that's just, even before God, even before we knew God, He knew that we were going to do a film like this. He knew that. I mean, the Bible tells us that those um, he, what is it? Those he chose, he foreknew and prepared them for good works even before he laid the foundations of the earth. And I think that's an encouragement for everybody. If um, so many people are wondering, what does God want me to do? And, you know, will I be ready? Yes, you'll be ready because God will prepare you. God won't send you out without preparing you. He prepared okay. David um, for slaying Goliath. I mean, David had killed a lion, he had killed a bear. Um, and so he was prepared for war. He, he knew how to do that, and so God prepared him for that. I think about how when God called Solomon to build the temple, I mean, he was prepared for that. It wasn't, and think about all the, the, the architects involved in it. They were prepared. They were skilled in their crafts. God had prepared them for that so that they could okay. then build the temple. So, um, you know, I really encourage everyone who's watching, too. Trust God. Yes. Seek God. Seek God. And, and understand, God is a faithful God. Yes. He's preparing you. Yes. We, you know? Well, we left Hollywood, mm, how many years? 17 years ago. Yeah. And we laid those gifts down to come out here to Arizona. And who knew that 17 years later we would be doing a film? Our love, our passion, something that we really, really love to do is act. Yeah. But we let it go for 17 years. And in those 17 years, God was preparing us to... To conquer, to, to partake in this film, to yeah. to be a part of this. I Some people get so impatient. They want they want their dreams to come true. They want their vision fulfilled right now. But sometimes, you know, God God lets us wait it out for a little while because He wants to know that we're yeah. prepared. Yeah, I, I would just encourage you pursue God, pursue God, 
the, the dream is there because God is the one who has the dreams. He's the one who has all that in his hands. So pursue him. And I think that's really what, what when we laid those gifts down, it wasn't with a desire to pick them back up. It was a desire to pursue God. This God who loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. Yes. This God who called me out of my darkness and into his light. That's the one I wanted to pursue. And then he revealed that yes. to us. He knew he our made desires. It clear. Yeah. He knew our desires. And again, just in Helen calling, I, I wish, I wish I could make clear to you. <laughs> what are the odds? How it, it truly that that's the honest to goodness <laughs> truth. What are the odds? They're impossible. They're uh, what did what would Anne say? They're God's odds, really are. Yeah. 